I'm honored to join you today at this year's United Nations International Day Against Drug Abuse and Illicit Drug Trafficking. The observance of the day goes beyond rituals, and it's a highly important commemoration of the joint, solemn, and unwavering commitment of UN member nations to take and strengthen action towards achieving a world free of drugs. And this is an important objective indeed. Drug abuse has become a global public health and socioeconomic challenge. And it places a huge burden, as all of us have heard already, on our healthcare system. And it portends grave consequences for our young people and the productivity of our labor force. And it undermines the security of our communities. The UNODC reports that drug use was responsible for the death of almost half a million people in 2019, and drug use disorders resulted in the loss of 18 million healthy years of healthy life. The 2018 National Drug Use Survey also revealed that Nigeria, at the time, that there were about 14.3 million drug users of which close to 3 million suffered from drug use disorders. This figure represents a 14.4% prevalence in Nigeria, a prevalence rate in Nigeria, which is about three times the global average prevalence rate of 5%. The UNODC also in its 2021 World Drug Report projects that by 2030, the number of people using drugs around the world will rise by 11% and by 40% in Africa alone. Of course, this is a disturbing projection because as the country with the largest population in Africa, this implies that Nigeria's use of uh, drug abuse uh, prevalence will rise substantially, especially considering the proportions that we are uh, leaders in terms of population. In the past 17 months, the NDLEA, we're told, has recorded over 17,647 arrests of offenders, including 10 drug barons. And I'm sure that that number increases every day if you're following the news. With over 2,369 convicted persons and over 150,000 kilograms of drugs that have been seized within the same period. So the statistics show that 5.5% of the population aged between 15 and 64 years used drugs at least once since 2019. This is precisely the age bracket that we cannot afford to lose to drugs. And if you look at the theme of this year's uh, International Day Against Drug Abuse and Illicit Drug Trafficking, it turns our attention to a rather different dimension of the problem. This is addressing drug challenges in health and humanitarian crisis, the increasing trends of drug abuse in areas of conflict and in post-conflict settings, such as in IDP and refugee camps. And this is of special concern to Nigeria, as we are in the throes of civil conflict and terrorism resulting in the displacement of large numbers of our population. The problem is a hydra-headed one. First, conflict and instability undermine domestic law enforcement and compromise border controls, which makes smuggling of drugs much easier. The second is that young people, who are usually the most vulnerable to drug use, also form the majority of armed combatants, and not surprisingly, there's a widespread use of drugs by these terrorists. And of course, we've heard that already uh, from uh, the chairman of the NDLA. And many of these terrorists and uh, criminal armed groups, of course, use drugs extensively. Indeed, some studies have shown that after controlling for armed groups and individual level variables, drug intake and alcohol consumption sharply increase the violent actions perpetrated during conflicts. Third is the triple jeopardy suffered by displaced persons, those in IDP camps and refugee camps. There's the trauma and stress of displacement. Its immediate consequences, of course, are unemployment, coping with new cultures, loss of self-esteem and hope, 
And this puts displaced persons at greater risk of substance abuse. For women and girls in particular, the situation is more harrowing. They're exposed to severe traumatic situations due to violence and sometimes sexual exploitation, especially in camps, which together with other stressful factors of displacement can lead to drug use. These problems are all worsened by the expected lack of access to treatment and therapies for drug abuse in refugee or IDP camps. The UN has since 2004 drawn the attention of all its member states to this problem, its dimensions and possible remedies. In a re resolution which was passed by the Economic and Social Council in that year, the uh, uh, the, 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 the UN said that drug control and related crime prevention assistance for countries emerging from conflict must be paid, special attention must be paid to it. And the whole range of problems of the general population, especially those related to vulnerable groups uh, and, and including combatants and non-combatants. The council then called for at action to strengthen drug control measures by dealing with both the supply and demand ends of the problem. The federal government has also taken both specific and general actions over the past seven years. And all these actions have been directed at trying to control or deal with the menace of illicit drug trafficking in Nigeria in particular. These actions include adopting a synergized and multi-agency approach the government has deployed counter-terrorism and counter-narcotics initiatives led by the NDLEA, which have successfully disrupted several high-profile drug networks. And as part of these efforts, with the funding from the European Union and technical support from the UNODC, relevant MDAs and civil society organizations, we rolled out the National Drug Control Master Plan for 2021 to 2025. This plan itself leverages an extensive evidence base, including the very, the very first National Drug Use Survey, which was conducted by the National Bureau of Statistics in 2018. The master plan adopts a comprehensive and inclusive approach to addressing issues of drug supply reduction, uh, uh, issues of drug abuse. And it has, uh, it is based on four thematic uh, pillars drug supply reduction, demand reduction, access to drugs for medical purposes, and governance and coordination. The plan is not just an approach majorly targeted at drug supply reduction. It's a much more balanced plan, and it, it is much more health-centered and looks at drug control, not just from the point of view of abuse, but also from a health perspective. A year ago also, President Muhammad Buhari launched the War Against Drug Abuse, WADA, an advocacy campaign designed to create awareness and propagate an anti-drug culture in Nigeria. This initiative involved the setting up of coordinated anti-drug committees in various states, in various local governments across the Federation. The President also approved the recruitment of an additional 5,000 personnel to enable the NDLEA extend special commands across all local governments. And I think it is also fitting to mention at this point, and I'm sure it's obvious to all, that in the Drug Law Enforcement Agency, the NDLEA, especially in the last two years, under the very dynamic leadership of General Buba Mawa, the NDLEA chairman, has been much fiercer and sharper in his determination to stamp out drug abuse and traffic it in the country. I think his vision and strong resolve has given the war against trafficking and abuse new energy, new purpose, and much clearer direction. While a great deal of effort has been invested in fighting drugs, uh, drug abuse in Nigeria, and a huge level of success has been recorded, and I'm sure we've seen from the figures that they, they share numbers, you know, tell us that much has been done. It is still evident that we still have a lot of ground to cover. The number of drug trafficking cases this past week alone proves that there is even much more illicit drug activity going on. Every time you arrest one or two people or several people, it does show that there is a problem. 
the express vision of the NDLEA goes beyond uh, apprehending drug criminals and convicting them. We must deepen that effort. And it's very clear that it's not just apprehending, but also stamping this drug trafficking, and, uh, drug trafficking and drug abuse out completely, relentlessly breaking illicit drug supply chains and distributions um, all over the country, discouraging drug use through intensive outreach and sensitization, and also promptly prosecuting traffickers. But above all, we must intensify rehabilitation of drug addicts, because what we are faced with is indeed a public health crisis, a crisis that is taking lives, destroying families, and shattering communities. I'm glad to hear that in 2021 alone, about 8,000 drug users were counseled and rehabilitated by the NDLEA. And in the first, year of, uh, the first half of this year alone, over 11,000 drug users have been counseled and treated. We must maintain a multi-dimensional approach and a holistic approach to tackling drug abuse. It is true that during the COVID-19 pandemic, accelerated drug use across the world was experienced, especially in rural areas, with many resorting to drug abuse and other negative coping mechanisms due to the lockdowns and socioeconomic shocks. Access to illicit drugs became easier with online sales, and we've heard uh, a lot of that already uh, this afternoon, and contactless uh, drug transactions, both influenced, and all of these influenced mainly by the pandemic. But the new normal still offers us opportunities for increased innovation in tackling the menace, especially through technology-based monitoring systems for promptly detecting and addressing uh, the drug market, the, the changes in the drug market and the changes in marketing of these drugs. And also accelerating mobile outreach programs, remote consultations and treatment for those who suffer from drug use disorders and who do not have uh, appropriate care. As much as the federal government through its agencies and the state governments would lead the charge with the decisive policy initiatives these strides must be complemented by changes at the family and community level also. The kind of change we seek regarding drug abuse cannot happen without the collaboration of families, faith-based organizations, and community leadership at the local levels. We must spearhead massive value reorientation across the country, reassessing cultural factors and systems that support drug abuse and trafficking. Our communities everywhere must rise to this challenge. The federal government will continue to support the NDLEA to fulfill its mandate, especially through data-driven and evidence-based policymaking, will continue to unearth enduring and sustainable solutions to the underlying causes of drug abuse. Once again, let me uh, commend the new, dynamic, and greatly improved NDLEA and appreciate uh, the very gallant officers for their service to the country. We must also... <laughs> we must also appreciate our development partners for the successes recorded so far and for their firm resolution to support the effort to ensure a clean and drug-free Nigeria. We are winning this war. And there is no question at all that the days of the scourge of drug abuse and trafficking and dependency are clearly numbered. But it will involve even greater investment in focus and determination for the long haul. Thank you very much for listening. God bless you. Thank you.